can you run a full petabyte of storage off an ultra low power Zima board? Today, we're gonna to be putting Unraid and TrueNAS head to head and testing them again to find out. And so today we're gonna to be checking out the Zima board and this is the 432, that's a four gigabyte version. And I know people are gonna say, but you should be using eight gigabytes with TrueNAS and indeed you should. But after multiple communications, they ended up sending me just a pile more of the four gigabyte boards. I now have a freakish amount of these. So we're gonna give it a shot with TrueNAS. However, in either case, I think the Zima blade is a much more attractive option. Check the links below for more information about the Zima blade. That is compatible with your own choice of DIMM modules, and it can go higher than even eight gigabytes up to 16 gigabytes, much more well-suited for something like TrueNAS. And we've got our SAS HBA that we'll be using here. This is a 92078E, and this has dual 8088 external connectors. We also will be using for a cache drive, a Samsung Evo two terabyte drive, and that'll give us a lot of temp space for writing things at as fast a speed as possible as it's moving over to the full petabyte of 22 terabyte SATA disks. And you can see those here. Now the Unraid and TrueNAS setups, we'll be using different file systems for these today, but I think that we're just trying to get some ideas around whether it's even possible because I have a lot of questions about whether this is gonna be able to handle this. Let me know in the comments below what you think right now. And we're gonna be doing all that on this. This is the DE6600. This is a 60 bay JBOD. Uh, these are on eBay every now and then for some pretty decent prices. Check the links below for that. Also, I've got a video that is super detailed on everything you need to know about the DE6600, and you can find that as well in the links below. And it's gonna be joining the other three JBODs above it here if we can get this running, but hopefully at lower wattages than they're using because they're running off of a head end that is a TrueNAS based R720XD, and even with a single processor, this is using quite a bit more electricity. So let's get our 22 terabyte SATA drives put into the trays over there. And then I'm gonna walk you through the rest of the steps to connect the system. All right, let's get this hooked up back here and see what kind of power it's drawing with this configuration. And also I've already installed TrueNAS on this. I'm gonna have a detailed video that talks a little bit more about that but for this, we just want to get this up and running and test this out. So let's go ahead and grab the SAS 8088 HPA cables. You can see them here plugged into this JBOD. Are you guys ready for this to get powered up? Get these slid in here. Let me get this powered on also. And if you check over here on the wall, we've got the Zima board actually connected over here so we can see the wattage that's going to be used by this. And with the SSD running and that HBA, we are pushing around 15, 14 to 15 watts, which really not that bad when you consider it, but definitely this is a different type of a setup for running this much capacity. And since we are ultra low RAM on the system, we've set a static ZFS arc max of one gigabyte of RAM for the pre-init. And that is hopefully going to take effect and help us out here. I've already booted with this setting, so I don't need to apply it again here, but I did want to let you guys know about that. And that's also one of the reasons that this is never good. This is not a supported configuration recommendation for TrueNAS. Eight gigabytes is the minimum. So you should not be running this on a four gigabyte variant, no matter what. And if you do, for sure, don't go to the TrueNAS forums and complain about things not working because things I would expect to not be working. Let's go to storage here, though, and see if we can create our pool all the same. And we're going to name this uh, Low E Pool. And we're going to select every one of these disks and put it over here into our data VDEV. But we do need to sort by capacity and remove this one. And we're going to set this up as a RAID Z2. Now, we're also going to go over here and add a special dev type. And we're going to add a cache. And the cache is where we are going to add in our 
SSD card, and that should be it. It looks like everything's here. I'm not going to do encryption on this. You can see that effectively we have 900 tibibytes of space as a result of this. Now, if we were to go with something a little less sacrificial, you can gain back a substantial portion, but stripes are not something that would be a recommended configuration. So a RAID Z2 is where we'll be at today. Raw capacity versus formatted capacity. Again, tibibyte versus terabyte. My fingers are crossed as we create this gigantic pool, and it'll be interesting to see whether or not this is actually stable. I have serious doubts about whether or not it will be, but there's only one way to try to find out, and that's to try. And there we have it. We have 835 workable tibibytes of space on this pool. It is up and running. I am surprised. Let's see if we can see any. Uh, Impacts happening here to, yeah, you know, the ZFS cache looks like it's doing okay. The CPU is, you know, it's working. So we've got our ZFS uh, micro machine going over here. Uh, we're going to copy over a two gigabyte file to it and just see what kind of performance it's getting. I don't expect it to get like really great performance at all, but actually, you know what? This is not looking that bad. Let's uh, minimize this and see if we can get a little bit better view of what's going on here. Even with just the little bit of ZFS cache that it does have, uh, the ancillary SSD probably picking up a little bit of that slack there, but definitely it's falling off here now. Oh boy, that was a tremendous fall off that we just saw there. Will it rebound? It just crashed. Although the system is still up and running, it hasn't crashed out the system. Now it has. Now it crashed out the system. Yes. That is what I thought. It has crashed out the system there. This is what happens when you try to run that small of a RAM configuration. It's just not going to work as soon as you start using ZFS. ZFS is literally geared towards higher end utilization of systems. A four gigs just never, ever should be something you try. All right. So we have it there for our attempt. Now, maybe you would be able to connect this if you already had everything written to it and read back. However, I'm going to say that's a pretty long shot also. Eight gigabytes minimum for good reasons. All right, next up, let's get ready and try out Unraid. And so I finally got loaded in on the Unraid, all of the disks. This did take quite some time to actually select them from the dropdown. And as you can see, there's quite a few disks that have not been added because you can only go up to 30 slots on the main array, and that leaves 28 slots in an additional. Of course, you can add a pool and add in additional devices, but when I say it's taken a long time, let's get on with it. That's how long it's taken. So we're going to go ahead and check this parity is already valid, because we don't actually need to sync up a bunch of empty data here and start our array. Now, hopefully this gets everything running. If there's a point in time where everything is likely to break, my guess is it actually is right about here. All right, and here we go. All right, it was uh, a fairly long format, but we are on the other side of it here. So we have 612 terabytes of usable space left here. So let's go ahead and create a Windows share. Uh, access that window share, write some data to it, and just make sure everything's uh, looking good here. But this is optimistic uh, so far when we start writing the data. I think uh, if there are any further problems, that will be when they pop up. So let's just go ahead and call this uh, the JBOD. Okay, and so let's go ahead and try moving over a file here, and hopefully this can complete without any issues. And this is being written directly to the array right now. So if we go over here to our main, uh, we can see that that is actually being written directly to the array. So instead of doing that, you would probably want to actually go ahead and write to a cache directory. So we're going to do that now here with the same file. And this should go and hit the cache drive at these slow network speeds, which I think do probably have something to do with the fact that we are chugging along on a relatively, yeah, there we go, 100% utilization there, uh, a relatively not beefy machine. That's putting it lightly. Uh, we're going to go and take a look here at what the power utilization looks like.
Now, the idle states aren't necessarily horrible, but, you know, if you start adding VMs, if you start adding Dockers, they're going to add up pretty quick on a CPU like an N3450. Just consider installing a low memory footprint uh, Linux like L Ubuntu and using command line to create shares. You're going to get the best performance, most likely that way. You're also going to see that you really don't have a tremendous amount of performance that can be had on a machine like this because it is a gigabit connection. And there is a SAS HBA, but you only have one PCIe slot. So you're going to be looking at maximum bonding two one gigabit NICs together. And even then, you're not going to be seeing that you're going to be able to push this very fast. And we can see that I've got a 4K uh, video that we uploaded here to the JBOD. And checking the playback performance on this, it's actually very decent. Uh, it's what I would expect pretty much from most of the things that I would be playing back over a one gigabit connection and totally capable of actually impressing me even slightly here. So I think there is some very decent use cases for this as a backend for a media server or if you're storing files that need to be read without needing to be written very often. This could actually be a very viable option for you. But I think it's very worth noting that this does work. I don't think that that is any digs whatsoever on TrueNAS for not operating. It was literally a system that did not meet specs. And like I mentioned, the new Zima blade that is coming out from Ice Whale is something that would be a really good idea if you were looking at doing something ZFS based. Now, if you're doing a smaller array, I don't think you're going to run into problems like this. And certainly if you are using just some connected USB drives and possibly some connected uh, SSDs, you're going to get an actually pretty good system. And then you can actually augment that with a much faster network connection. And you could even get a 10 gigabit connection. That would be actually a really good idea for a smaller system. And you can see even changing the page does hit the load up high here because you're running a web server to access the interface on Unraid. So this is why a bare metal instance, not running any sort of PHP, Nginx, none of that stuff is going to vastly outperform as far as the CPU utilization, any sort of GUI based alternatives. But we will be testing out some pretty exciting other things that include having just a straight up GPU. I think this is actually going to be one of the futures that we see pretty soon. You're going to buy a GPU and it's going to probably have like almost all the rest of the computer attached to it. I think that that's something that we can see in the not too distant future. And certainly this is a step in that direction for certain types of gaming, for certain types of workloads. This is going to be actually pretty killer. And so this one I already do know does work. But again, not using ZFS on this system, using an Ubuntu system, which of course has much better memory tolerances around the file systems and what you're doing. So four gigabytes of RAM for that. Pretty, pretty okay. Are you going to be able to do high end gaming at a PCIe 2 4X? No. But there are other workloads that you can do. And we're seeing rapid advancements in the PCIe buses on small single board computers that makes me think that we will be probably seeing some really, really interesting things in the next generations and waves of them that come out. And so seeing a wattage up to 20 watts on this system is a little bit higher than some people might expect. I found myself a little bit surprised by it. Let me know what you think in the comments below because around the 20 to 30 watt range, you can start seeing desktop class systems that could perform actually much better than this that would be capable of a much, much quicker experience, which gets back to another point. This is absolutely not a knock on TrueNAS whatsoever because TrueNAS has minimum specs that are clearly stated as eight gigabytes and you shouldn't even be using eight gigabytes if you have ZFS arrays that are this large. You should definitely go for as much RAM as you can get, and that will give you a much better ZFS experience. Cannot imagine what the resilvering would be like on something like this. It would probably actually be catastrophic and not work. Seeing, uh, seeing Unraid work here though is pretty interesting. If you did have a four gigabyte little machine like a Zima board or a single board computer that had only four gigabytes and you were looking at a file system, there is a big takeaway here, something like XFS, ext 4 those are going to perform for you quite a bit better than what you're going to see with the likes of ZFS, which is performance hungry. Now, I will also say another huge takeaway here is that while these are really cool, they're also kind of a pain in the butt. 
While you can have a lot of additional capabilities, I cannot tell you how much time I've spent on this because I haven't accounted for it yet, but it's a lot. And the reason why is because working through the PCIe system's settings on the BIOS is difficult. And I had to figure out quite a few different settings to actually get this to work. Here are some of those settings right now. And so you need to go into the chipset and go to the South cluster, uh, which is, uh, I guess is Southbridge, uh, and click down here. And I'm going to show you all of the different options that I've changed here from the stock defaults. So you're going to enable the PCIe Express clock gating. The 8XH decode, enable that. Just leave that as zero. Peer memory write, enable, enable that. And compliance mode, enable that. Come down to each one of these. And I'm just going to show you for one here the settings that I've got. And you can actually emulate these on all the rest of them. The reason why I don't know exactly which one it is, is because this uh, lists out quite a few uh, PCI root ports. However, uh, I'm not sure which one the actual PCI Express is on. So make sure it's enabled. Set ASPM to auto. That is probably going to be set to disabled. And then go ahead and move on down here and set the speed to PCIe Gen 2. Don't leave it at auto. And go down to transmit half swing and set that to enable. And as you can see, there's not a lot of documentation that comes with this. Something that I hope the Ice Whale company is going to do in the future better so that end users can very clearly understand what some of the bio settings mean and their impacts that they might have instead of having to go through trial and error, reboot after reboot after reboot. Especially with something like a JBOD, that takes quite a bit of time. So I am excited about the fact that we can get such small form factors and I think the wattage for a use case like a petabyte is amazing, frankly. If you had a read intense operation, I think this is something that could actually be pretty beneficial to you. However, if you have a write intense application, this is absolutely not something that you should be doing. And if you did have to run into any sort of an error or issue, or you wanted to run Docker containers or VMs, you're quickly gonna be up against a wall of performance and that's gonna not necessarily be what you're hoping for as an experience. Now, I didn't use Casa OS for this because Casa OS, while it's good, it is not something that most of the people out there that are home labbers that have a GUI-based uh, centric kind of view of things are gonna to gravitate towards. And some of the pooling capabilities for storage on it are not necessarily the same as you're gonna get with a TrueNAS, which is a little bit more enterprise grade, or an Unraid, which is just very simple and easy for people to understand and use. So I would say these are awesome devices. The Zima Blade, which is just about to start coming out, is something that is actually much more exciting in my opinion because that allows you to add 16 gigabytes of RAM is where you really start seeing that your ZFS performance on something like a TrueNAS could be really good. And with the newer processor, it's gonna be better than it is with this poor little N, what is this, N3450 that we've got? not necessarily a speed demon at all. Now, I do love the idle states of these, and if you did have a read, not intense operation, this is a way you could run a full JBOD, whether it's a petabyte, whether it's a smaller amount, it doesn't necessarily matter what the size is, it matters what your workload is. And so that is actually the biggest takeaway, size, your actual compute processing that you would put behind a storage server appropriately because this would be one of the worst mismatches if you had a petabyte and you were actually utilizing that for writing and reading intense operations daily to pair it with something like this. You, of course, would be significantly better off going with something like I plan on going with, which is an epic system. And those with their PCIe Gen 4 speeds able to maintain amazing performance and give great user experiences. So let me know in the comments below if you've got ideas about what I could do to make some of these Zima boards into something a little bit more user-friendly, a little bit cooler, and useful to you. I have so many of these. I don't even understand how I've gotten this many of them. They were supposed to send one of the 832s. They sent five of the 432s. In addition to the other five, I now have 10 Zima boards in my house, and they're all four gigabyte versions. <laughs> so I don't know what to say about that, but I will be looking for something to do, possibly some giveaways, and make sure you hit like and subscribe so that you can be notified whenever one of those happens. Everybody have a great rest of your day and I will see you next time.